Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, back with another episode of the award-winning Autastic Friends, the Pod Talk. As always, joined by Michael and Melissa Novelli. Hey, guys. What's hey, happening? Man? We are back with a regular episode. We had a, another episode where we were able to highlight a specific volunteer, Amelia McDonald, and honor some of the other volunteers for Pawtastic Friends. But today we have Bogey, Prince, and Thor. Who wants to tell me about Bogey? Melissa. Here, the Speaker of the House. So Bogey is such a wonderful dog. He actually started in the program back in 2021 and was coming to the center since then, he's moved to our partners at Friends for Life, Humane Society in Perum. His trainer actually goes out there once a week and trains him. When he was st first started, he was just a, a baby, about 10 months. He's a Dogo Argentine and a big boy, big. lots of love, and just needs a chance. He wasn't doing well in boarding and the boarding situation that he was in. So that's how he ended up transferring to a different rescue, which I, I commend the rescues for that because it's nice when you have everybody working together for the greater good for the dog. So he loves agility. He's very smart. He's eager to learn. And he's just a, a well-rounded, great pup that just needs an owner, a hero. He needs a hero. So what does that mean for an owner? What type of uh, owner should they go to a home with other dogs? Should it be a dog? Should he be by himself? What would be, you would think, Melissa, that a uh, bogey's forever home? So he would need to, to go to a home with an owner because he is very big and strong. Somebody that's able to handle him properly, whether it's on the leash, whether, because he is a strong boy. He would do great with somebody who likes to hike. I probably wouldn't say small children because he is really big and his tail might not go small tile down. But other than that, I think with the proper meet and greet, he may do well with other dogs. Um, he seems to be okay with other dogs. It's always right, just like people. Some people you like, some people you don't. Some dogs he might like, some dogs he might not. So he might be dog select. But he's just a phenomenal dog, and he is so handsome, and he's gorgeous. And he's with our he's with our partners out there at Friends for Life out in Perum, which they do a lot of great work. All right. Next up, I have Prince. It's, oh, I'm going to talk about yeah. that, too. <laughs> it's going to be the Melissa and Tom yeah. podcast. I, I see my just there. <laughs> um, so Prince Thor, oh, my gosh. They have such a unique story. They had lived at a sanctuary in California most of their life, and the person passed away. So they found themselves back in rescue, and they were at a boarding facility, and they were so fearful. They weren't even able to come out of the kennel for over a year. So they were moved to a new boarding facility, and our whole goal was we just wanted to get them to the center. We wanted to get them to the center. So with the help of dedicated and compassionate volunteers, we, it was baby steps with them. So our boarding buddies team would take them out. And the first time we took them out, it was just a short walk. They wouldn't potty in front of us. They wouldn't take any treats. You couldn't touch them. Just the look in their eyes was just a fear. Like they just wanted to like escape. They wanted to run. They wanted to, we took all of that into consideration. The next week, we had them out in the yard, and you could see the bond between them and Prince following Thor as he romped through the yard. And it brought most of us to tears because it was like you're watching them, and it was this, it was just like a beautiful sight. And so each week, they got a little more comfortable with their volunteers. They started to potty in front of us. They started to take treats. What kind of treats? They like chicken pot pies. <laughs> and they started to welcome a kind touch and let the volunteers brush them. And they would come to us for love. And so each week they got more confident. They trusted us more. And then one day my friend Lori called and said, I'm going to move them to my place. And she has a boarding place that's next door to us. and. 
she said, what do you think about them getting in the car? And I'm like, I said, part of the boarding buddies team will be there, Pat and Masha, who they just adore. And I said, Thor will jump in first. And if Thor jumps in, Prince will follow. Sure enough, they got in there. They made it to next door. And again, each day they got more confident, thanks to Lori and her team that are just amazing with the love that they give the dogs and the care. And then it was a Tuesday and I told trainer Melissa, we're going to, we're going to bring them to the center. We went over, we got them and we did this video of a day that we had been waiting for what seemed like forever. And they came to the center for the first time. And it was just, even though they didn't do much, it was just a small victory that they were there. And now once they were there, then Melissa could do her magic. And it's each week, they just get better. And they come up to her and they might not take treats right now. And it's not just about learning. It's just about setting them up for a life that they've been way overdue to receive. Could you describe what both Prince and Thor look like? So Prince is... A, they're both shepherdy. Thor might have some maybe lamb in him. He might have them. And they're older guys. Life, they, I feel like for them, and I'm not a professional. I'm just a volunteer that wants to make a difference just like everybody else. But I feel like the life that they deserved, I, I don't feel like they had much human contact. And now they're getting overloaded between here and the volunteers and Melissa and Lori and her team and nose work. We got them last week to come to nose work. And even though they wouldn't take any treats or anything, they still got to experience it. We're we're helping enrich their lives. That's what it is. Yeah. Michael, I've heard you say more than once, there's lots of tears at Bautastic Friends. And I think we saw one of the reasons when Melissa was describing them, what, what would you guys say would be the best home for both Prince and Thor? I, I hope they're going to go together. We hope so. And we hope that they can get adopted together. A calm home that's very patient and that will help them continue in their journey of trust and, and help them enjoy life. Like I said, they're older guys and they just need a, an owner that can, can go ahead and show them compassion, show them patience, and be dedicated to giving them the best life that they can have. Whether it means they might not be the type of dog that's going to come sit on your lap, that's going to come and give you kisses. They're never probably going to be that type of dog, but they still can be a dog that can live a happily ever after. And those two deserve every bit of it. So I've heard you guys talk over our podcast about dogs who are traumatized, dogs who have trust issues. These guys seem to really have had all of those things. And maybe traumatized is the wrong word. But could you say a few words about really how afraid a dog can be and what can get them to literally stay in their cage? Is that something you guys had seen before? Yes. Uh, We've seen it before because when we used to volunteer at the local shelter, a lot of times there would be dogs that would just cower in the back and volunteers would sit on the outside of the kennel and feed them a treat or talk softly to them and then graduate. Maybe the dog would come through the guillotine and come on the inside and still be cowered in the corner. And then the volunteer might have the next option to move and sit in the kennel. And sometimes it would take months and months. But when you have a good team of volunteers, like I said, heart and soul and rain or shine, hot or cold, they're there and they do what it takes. All right. I know you guys have an upcoming event, a fundraising event, a block party, and you also got uh, a calendar competition. Could you tell us about both of those and uh, hopefully where people could find out more information on them? I'll let Michael talk about that because I don't want to steal the show. You can talk about the calendar. No, he, Go ahead and talk about the calendar. So the calendar contest see. Tom, <laughs> is this amazing contest that we do every year. Thanks to Portraits by Nicole. 
and viewers and followers out here can enter their dog in our calendar contest. It's a $20 entry fee and a dollar per vote. And the top 12, one of the stunning babes or hunks or dolls gets to win the cover of the calendar. And then the rest of them get a month. January, February, March, and April. So they fill the calendar and it's just awesome. We've had our volunteers enter dogs. We've had donors enter dogs. We've had a lot of dogs that have been in the program. In fact, Zuma, we talked about her a while back. She won the calendar contest. She was on the cover. And we've had volunteers that have entered dogs that are still waiting in rescue that have made the calendar. So it, it's just a great way to support us. And what's even better is that 100% of the entry fee of the vote all goes to Potastic Friends. So that helps us continue to sponsor training and to do all the great things that together between the trainers, the volunteers, together that what we're trying to accomplish, one goal, and that's success for these dogs. And people can enter it from anywhere. You can live in Alaska and enter your dog. You can live in wherever, Europe. I just can't be in that calendar. We'll just send Nicole on a flight. And <laughs> she could take the pictures of the dog there. Yeah, but the calendars are phenomenal and she does great work and the photo shoots and just her pictures are just fantastic. So what about the upcoming block party? So the block party is our biggest fundraiser of the year. We've been doing this now for oh, nine years, 10 years. Started out at the salon. Yeah, started a long time ago. We were raising money for the local shelter and now we're raising money for this Paltastic Friends 5,000 square foot enrichment training center, which you've seen and know all about it. So we have local entertainers that perform. We have local vendors. We have food trucks. We have silent auctions, raffles, all just a community day. It's free. They come out. We've got some incredible sponsors. Boyd Gaming out here. They're going to be our event sponsor this year. Mm -hmm. Wax Tracks had signed back here that's covering up the sink. <laughs> they are our stage sponsor and longtime supporters. Shout out to Lamar. They do digital billboards. They actually give us two weeks of free advertising on their digital boards across Las Vegas. Uh -huh. So and don't forget the Dollar Loan Center. They're going to sponsor our info booth again. One of our new sponsors in the, and all. Chill, in the chill zone, zone where people get to watch the entertainment. So just a way for the community to come together and see the Potastic Friends Center here. They haven't been here yet. A lot of people have been. They love what we do. And it's a community. That's what we want here. We want it to be a community supporting, helping these homeless rescue dogs. We're their voice. So that'll be April 28th, Sunday from 11 to 4. So we've got time for a quick tip of the day. What tip do you have for people for this episode? Yeah, what tip do you have since you're Melissa Squared? It's supposed to be your tip. So I think I will just do a tip of the day from me as a volunteer. My tip is not about a dog. My tip is to everybody out there that's watching, that's listening. If you have any free time, volunteer. That's my tip because not only does volunteering enrich the lives of the organizations that you touch, but it enriches your life and it makes you a better person. And that's my tip. And, and that's a really good tip because, you know, a lot of the rescues out here in organizations, they struggle just to get people to walk their dogs. I mean, we're oversaturated with dogs here in Las Vegas and everybody's always trying to get volunteers. So, I mean, if people are sitting on the couch, get out there for an hour. You're going to help change a dog's life. You're going to help once again, enrich the life of the dog and yourself, as Melissa said. And it could be anything you like. If animals might not be your thing, go volunteer at a place like Opportunity Village, enrich the lives of those students that they have there. There's so many fantastic organizations that were with Three Square, all of these organizations out here. So you find your niche and any free time that you have and that you can contribute back. Like I said, it makes you a better person and it enriches the organization that you're helping out. And kindness is free. All right, guys. Thanks so much. I look forward to our next episode. Thanks, Thanks. Tom.